Hi, everybody. My name is Jessica Ayala. I'm Associate Dean Teaching and Learning in the Faculty of Social Work, and I'm also Educational Leader in Residence for Online Learning at the Taylor Institute. Uh, today, I just want to spend a few minutes showing you um, I am one of my D2L sites. I actually, uh, this is my D2L Sandbox uh, site, and I've copied some components of a couple of different online courses uh, to show you, and you might get some ideas uh, as you develop your own online course. So this is the home page uh, for my Sandbox. Uh, one of the things you'll notice is here on the home page is that there's a news item, and this one says, welcome to our course. Um, I always like to put a welcome um, news item. Uh, just to think about for the first time that students log into the course, uh, really just to say hello and to give them some guidance about uh, where they should get started, where they should go. Uh, and one of the things that I think it's, it's uh, top of mind when you're developing uh, your D2L course uh, is to make it easy to navigate for students. So you have to think about uh, dozens, possibly hundreds of students uh, who are accessing your course, uh, potentially all over the country, uh, and they could easily get lost uh, in your course. So the easier you can make it uh, to navigate uh, and to let students know, give them some guidance about what they should be doing um, and when uh, and where to find things that they need to do, uh, that you actually are going to save yourself many, many emails and many hours of trying to navigate, uh, help students navigate the course. Um, I use this news items uh, fairly regularly. Um, so in addition to this initial welcome, um, I try to email students maybe about once a week. Um, I actually typically do that on the weekend just to say, this is what's coming up in our course. These are the things that you should be doing. These are the things you need to keep in mind. Don't forget, we have a Zoom session on Thursday. This is how you need to prepare. We have a test coming up. Uh, it's a great way to communicate uh, with students um, and just to keep them on track, to touch base with them. They know that you're there, you're engaged, um, and you're providing them guidance uh, on what to do. So um, I, I, every week I would put a, a new news item and I also tend to uh, use the uh, the email function to email it to everybody so that they get it by email and they also uh, get it here on the news. So a wonderful way to um, keep in touch uh, with your students. Okay, I'm going to go to content now. I'm just going to click on that. And so the student uh, see can figure out pretty easily where to start. It says orientation start here when you go to content. So um, one of the things that I like to do is include a couple of orientation activities. You might think about uh, doing this in your course. I've got the syllabus here that students can um, access very easily. Um, and then I have a first activity, getting to know each other. Um, students can feel pretty isolated uh, in an online course, especially if they're in a large class or they're in a class where maybe they don't know anybody and that can be pretty scary. Um, so I like to um, have an activity, and I, I do this for every uh, online course that I teach, uh, that it's just an introduction. It's kind of a fun thing, um, and I always start first. So I always go and I post an introduction. I say a little bit about myself, who I am, uh, maybe talk about uh, the course um, for a bit, uh, like, you know, why I'm excited about teaching the course, for example. Uh, and then I ask students to introduce themselves, maybe talk about um, maybe something they like. Sometimes I ask them to, you know, share their favorite website or, um, you know, what's, what's one thing they might not know, other people might not know about them. Uh, that's kind of a fun thing. Um, I ask them to post pictures. Um, if, if students don't feel comfortable posting pictures of themselves, they can post pictures of their pets, uh, for example, or their hometown. Uh, it's a great way for students to, to really just get to know each other uh, get to know you a little bit as well. Uh, I always post pictures of me, you know, things I, lo I love. Um, and it's a wonderful way to start building community. So um, I highly recommend that you might uh, think about um, starting with uh, some introductions uh, for your course. Uh, and then I might have some activities that um, help students to get ready for our course. This is getting ready for Adobe Connect. So this was before we had Zoom. Uh, 
uh, now we have Zoom and I might have, um, uh, for example, just a link to the um, Zoom website at U of C so that if students um, are new to it, have never used it, uh, they can go there and read instructions on how to download it. Um, sometimes I also do a recording just like this one uh, that maybe is about five or ten minutes just to uh, introduce students to our course. So I say, you know, again, a little bit about who I am, uh, about our course, uh, what is it that I hope that they're going to achieve, um, maybe take a few minutes talking about the assignments in the course, uh, and also um, talking about my expectations and uh, the things that I think that they need to do to be successful in the course. So, for example, it could be things like um, that I would recommend that they log in a couple of times a week uh, to the discussion board uh, and, you know, to, to read posts, to keep engaged, to check on the content. Um, and that, for example, that I think they probably should spend uh, five to ten hours a week uh, on the course uh, and that I recommend that they set times aside um, to work on the course. One of the um, things about online learning is that um, if you are not uh, too organized, it's easy to um, have it, you know, fall at the bottom of the list of all the other things that you're doing in your life. So I really try to encourage my students to um, set aside uh, some times uh, in the week to work on the course. So uh, anything that you can communicate to your students that really uh, introduces them to the course, that makes them feel you know, excited about your course, uh, maybe get to know you a little bit, uh, or that will support their success in the course, uh, I think is a wonderful way to start. So um, this, this uh, orientation is actually something that I use, again, for all of my courses. So once you develop it once, um, you can use it uh, any number of times. Um, one of the other things you'll notice here is that the, there are lots of different modules. Well, there's seven modules. I actually did not, uh, this was a course that was um, already modularized. So this is maybe more modules than, than I would have developed. Uh, but it is a great idea to um, break your content into modules uh, that, um, you know, it depends on your course and I guess what, what modules make sense to you, but it's just a wonderful way to structure your course into more manageable uh, components um, and topics. Um, and so we're just going to go to module one here. Uh, so you see, uh, this is now from a different course. Um, and so I have the dates of the module, just a little bit of an introduction. Um, when our Zoom session is going to be, um, and I have the learning outcomes for the module. Then you see it goes module one, activity one, complete the required readings. Um, I always have uh, readings, um, you know, whether it's from a textbook uh, or from um, or other readings. This is, for example, is a link to the Code of Ethics. Um, so whatever uh, readings are required for that module, um, this is what I would include here. Um, if they are articles that the Copyright Office has uh, approved, um, they oftentimes will give you uh, a link that you can uh, include here uh, for your students. So. It's a great reminder of the students of uh, the readings uh, that are associated um, with the module. So I always start there. Uh, now here you go. Activity two is watch three videos. Uh, and these videos relate, uh, of course, to our module. Um, video one here is a pre-recorded uh, a pre-recorded uh, presentation that I did, just like this one. Um, but um, the, I actually, for the entire course, I only recorded two presentations. One is because I was very busy and didn't have a lot of time uh, to do a lot of presentations. Um, and there uh, is a lot of uh, material out there um, already that you can find. And um, it, it is really worthwhile, I think, to spend a little bit of time trying to find resources, either YouTube or TED Talks um, or other um, uh, the resources. There's a lot uh, on the internet uh, that you can uh, already use that's really relevant. Um, if you do happen to have a, uh, a TA, for example, or some support uh, for the course, it's a great thing to um, ask somebody to help you to find some of these resources. Um, so I have here the presentation for students to listen to. Um, 
And then there's the, the PowerPoint version or PDF version of just of the slides. Uh, and here I have some additional slides for some students who might be uh, interested. Uh, and then it goes on to the second video. So you see it's very clear as far as what you should do. Watch video one, watch video two, watch video three. Then we go on to activity three is participate uh, in the discussion board here. It provides a link uh, to the discussion board and a little bit of guidance. Activity four uh, then is to participate in a Zoom session. Uh, and then these uh, here are actually, this is what I posted after our Zoom session. I posted a couple of the things, activities that we did in class. Um, and then finally, I have additional resources that students who are, um, you know, really uh, keen um, and want to learn more can go and uh, review these. Uh, and so it very clearly states um, here that they are optional. Uh, and so you see in terms even of the way that they're labeled, it's pretty easy to navigate. Uh, I'm just going to go to one, one of the other modules here, um, module five, and you see that um, once students have gone through the first module, uh, there is a predictable structure in terms of the way that the modules uh, and the course activities um, are uh, presented and organized. And I even have the same picture associated with the same kind of activity. And that's just again to help students to navigate um, the course. The actual activity, so it always starts with reading, but then the activities are different uh, in each one. So here I have activity two is to review uh, a lecture and then watch a video and review a website uh, is another activity here. Uh, and students have an option of watching one of these four videos. So it's great to uh, include, I would say, first of all, a range of activities that may be appealing to different kinds of learners um, and also um, to provide some choice uh, for students to be able to um, to be able to uh, look into things or learn more about things that they're particularly inter interested in. Um, so one of the things I really like to do is to have students review a website and then share uh, or like the video and share their learnings with each other. Um, it's a wonderful uh, way for students to collaborate uh, and learn from each other uh, in the discussion boards. Um, and so you see then participate in the discussion board, participate in the Zoom session, uh, and then uh, there's an assignment uh, as well associated with this module. So there's a link to the Dropbox there, uh, and then the other resources. So, um, so really helpful, uh, again, to have um, a predictable um, structure. Uh, now you might think this seems like a lot of work. Um, it certainly is. Uh, one thing I would say is that I have been teaching online for 20 years and some of these courses um, that I, that uh, pieces that I'm showing you are developed over time. So it's certainly, um, I would say, do, do what you can. Um, and, you know, over time, if you get another opportunity to teach it online, you just keep improving um, your site. You know, at this point, uh, really, I just usually go into the site and just try to do updates, maybe uh, update resources. And so over time, it does uh, get easier. Um, so hopefully that gives you um, a couple of ideas about how to structure your D2L site. So uh, again, I'm just going back to the home page, um, using the news feature uh, to communicate with students, and perhaps the email feature, oh, went to a different course, uh, perhaps the email feature to touch base uh, with students uh, regularly. Um, modularizing the content uh, and then creating a predictable structure that is easy to navigate uh, for students and then finally integrating a variety of activities uh, within the course that can really be appealing to different kinds of students uh, and learning styles. So those are just some tips for developing your D2L site. Um, I hope they are helpful and best wishes as you develop your own site. Thanks for listening.